InfoWorks WS Pro 2023.1 offers new enhancements to the Demand Area Analysis feature. So we can open the Demand Area Grid. When you right-click on the grid, for now we're going to jump straight to the Properties. From the Properties, this is where we can set up the parameters for each zone. Uh, this is where you can define which profile uh, will be used for your unprofiled demand as well as where your leakage profile will get defined. There's also tools that will help you delineate the boundary elements of each zone. If we come to the calculation tab, you can enter the parameters that will be used in the leakage model with built-in defaults from industry standards. The ability to map the sensors to the boundaries of the zone to come up with the net flow going into the zone and much more. Finally, if we come to the Demand and Leakage tab, we can see the calculated results in a time series. The top line, when showing as stacked traces, will represent the total net inflow of water that goes into each area as total consumption. From this line, we can also then subtract out the green area is the known demand from any uh, large customers where we have a time time series profile of the water usage, such as at hospitals or large industrial customers. Uh, once that is taken out, we calculate the minimum nightly flow time time of day. In this in this zone, it happened to be at around 4:45 in the morning, and from this time we can take the an average per capita uh, water usage. Using, uh, in this case, we can use the default, which is the off watt UK standard um, estimate of 1.7 liters per person per hour. Once that is taken out, the remainder can be assumed to be leakage. So we apply a pressure driven leakage that is the bottom red line. And then the remainder of the flow is this blue area, which is our unprofiled demand. And that would be represented as our all of our residential customer meters that don't have time series. With all of these discrete time profiles extracted from the data, uh, we can actually take these and apply them directly into the model. And so this can be a great tool for helping you understand the leakage within each zone and help you start to parameterize your model to represent realistic conditions very easily. Uh, we can also start to look at the summary data of all zones. And this is one of the features that we added to make these results easier. So within this table, you can see if you have a large, a large system with many zones, you can scroll across and see all of the summary outputs, such as the number of properties with unprofiled demand, the total unaccounted for water. So this would be the water that is essentially leakage. And what's helpful is that you can also compare this to the background losses. And this is one of the calculations that uh, you can base on one of the, uh, in this case, we use the WRC report as a standard, but you can also use a 1.5 power law. Uh, so this will take the properties of your network to come up with what are estimated typical background losses. And if you subtract that, you get the excess unaccounted for water. And so this is the leakage beyond a typical benchmark. And so while each zone may have varying amounts of unaccounted for water and varying size in terms of number of customers, this number will start to show you where the lowest hanging fruit are in terms of tracking down leakage within your network. And now you can right click and you can copy the results to your network user fields. Let's say I want to create maps on all of my pipes where I want to apply the excess unaccounted for water to user number one. And let's say I want to normalize this among my different pressure zones uh, against the number of demand pro uh, properties. So I can use that as user number two. And maybe I also want to look at the number of the length of mains. So with these user numbers mapped, for the pipe field, I can click OK. And now for that zone, it will have updated all of my pipes. So if I double click on this pipe here, 
I can see the user numbers in terms of my excess unaccounted for water, the number of properties, and the total length of mains. From here, I can do uh, some fun different maps. So for example, I could look at the leakage normalized per, uh, per unit length of foot. So in this case, what I'm doing is I can access those values. Uh, I could access them directly um, by pointing directly at the user number fields. Um, but in this case, um, let's say I want to normalize things. I could take the excess leakage divided by the length, and I can apply that to all my zones. And you can see which area has more excess leakage per linear foot. Uh, of course, you may know, uh, in, in many cases also, the leakage can be more closely correlated with the number of connections and properties. So that may be a better uh, denominator to normalize against, in which case this, this area is standing out even stronger as higher leakage per property.